Well, it's time for Off the Press. G.D. Johnson joins us this morning on The Breakfast. G.D. Johnson, it's good to have you uh, be part of the conversation. Good morning, Missy. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. That's all right. Um, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper. Uh, the ban the caption says, Suspense in PDP as Atiku Wiki comes meet today. It's boldly written, underneath party members worried over delay in constitution of campaign council. BOT warns party leaders against unguarded utterances. We're ready for trance, says WK loyalists. There's a riders, uh, you have underneath the bold caption. President Muhammad Buhari gives hope to children orphaned by insurgency. And federal government claims it spends 18 billion naira on fuel subsidy on a daily consumption. I mean, following that investigation, uh, the drilling that, that's going on, uh, you know, the Minister of Finance put that out. Well, troops clear house loaded with bomb materials in Kaduna, reported vessel evading arrest, pirate attack force, that's what the Navy is saying. Trapped fund, Emirates suspends flight to Nigeria indefinitely. Just before we move away from the leadership, two more headlines, quite interesting. Please bust ritualist shrine and recover 20 mummified bodies in a door. And ASU's insistence on six-month salary stalling negotiation. That's what the federal government is quoted to say. But uh, we also have the punch, and so we need to move away from the leadership. On the punch newspaper, endless boring. Debt servicing gobs 13.17 trillion naira under Buhari. Education suffers. Federal government budgets 4 trillion naira for education in seven years. Sector uh, loses 837 days to strike. Salary arrears stalling negotiation. That's what the federal government is saying. And uh, no pay, no resumption. ASU is quoted to say. On the other hand, the government doesn't saying, you know, those who have not worked should not be paid. No, so no pay. Uh, no work, no pay. All right. Education underfunded. Federal government may borrow to fund sector. Economists won. Federal government to end petrol subsidy in June 2023. Why Muslim Muslim ticket is problematic for Nigeria, the PFN is saying. And take battle to terrorists, hide out. Buhari orders the military. There's a lot of these orders that we have. You know, the president has been given several orders. The question is, uh, is it that, you know, it's difficult to implement these orders? Commuters grown and businesses short as Shango Ota Road collapses. Mm, it looks really very uh, sad. I mean, if you look at the picture, there's a picture. You just imagine what the people will be going through at the time. Association fumes as Lagos extends ban on Okada for more local government included. Lawless soldiers brutalize cops for seizing colleagues' motorcycle. And police uncover shrine with 20 cops and suspect kicked. And uh, Sean Rivers votes lose poll. WK wants the People's Democratic Party. Now, these are the headlines on the Punch newspaper. We move away from the Punch. We have the Nation in front of us. Uh, on the Nation newspaper, federal government insists on no work, no pay rule for varsity workers. Government asks you differs on salaries and payment platforms. Students to sue teachers and ministers. Uh, the, the, the debate yesterday and the conversation that was uh, generated in different spaces is what difference would you make if uh, the government or ASUSUS, I mean, would it change anything? Especially when you look at the judicial system where there's a lot of delays. I mean, before you actually get, you know, judgment, it takes a lot of time. Uh, what does this make for the people? Lagos extends Okada ban to four more councils. $418 million pirate club refund a case against Malami by governors. And just before we move away, governor's way option on petrol subsidy cash. Daily payment hits 18.69 billion naira. Landing costs per liter now 
448 Naira. Tunubu Shatima ticket best for Nigeria now, says APC chair. What transpired during Obasanjo APC candidates' parley? Uh, that's what you find. An NPA generated 172.285 billion Naira in six months, says MDA. And PDP BOT chair Jibrin cautions Atiko weakest cam. These are the headlines on the nation. And just we, before we have G.D. Johnson share his perspective on uh, this headlines now, uh, we have the Daily Trust newspaper. Strike, no end in sight as ASU federal government refused to shift grounds. Buhari insists on no work, no pay, no law backs policy. That's what the SAN scored to say. Don't pay us and forget two sessions. The lecturers are quoted to say, that's a lot of back and forth with the federal government and, you know, the union. Holding us to ransom on patriotic, that's what students are saying, and some of them are considering, you know, the option of going to court. Well, Atiku Wike's feud, IU's refusal to step down, stores peace move, and federal government suspends 18, or spends 18.4 billion naira on petrol subsidy uh, on a daily basis. That's what the finance minister is saying. Eight feared dead in Lagos Church stampede. Again, you find the MPA generates 172 billion naira in six months and remits 78.5 billion. Again, Buhari orders security agencies to eliminate insurgency. Three arrested and 20 cops recovered in a Edo shrine. The headlines this morning on uh, the Daily Trust newspaper. It's time for us to have uh, G.D. Johnson share his thoughts. G.D. Well, Johnson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Matt, let's start off with the subsidy. I mean, it's something that, uh, you know, I've been wondering. Uh, on this, the federal government to end petrol subsidy in June 2023. Now, prior to 2022, which we're in, in 2021, the government had said that fuel subsidy was going to end in June 2022. What's going on? Well, the, the, the last span of this administration will come to an end, May 29, 2023. Uh, and then, technically, what the administration is saying is that for a subsidy will end with the expiration of the final of the present administration. Um, there's no way for the incoming administration to decide whether it wants to continue with this first subsidy or not. However, um, there has been this argument and counter argument that whether there are provisions for first subsidy or, or not in 2023 budget, in 2022 budget, because I recall, I think I watched a particular program or read a particular article where. Uh, Things were made allegedly that there were no provisions for first subsidy in 2022, 2023 uh, budgets, and where the payment for the subsidy is coming from, only God knows. But you know, in Nigeria, it's more or less like an abracadabra kind of democracy. The more you look, the less you see. And then um, if Termites do not eat uh, um, vouchers. Snake will be sparing money, and the government will be making um, claims that provisions are made for subsidy, whereas it is not stated in the in the in the, in the appropriation act, which is the budget for the for the year in question. So we will see whether the incoming administration will be transparent enough. To let us actually know what is really what is really happening with respect to first subsidy or non first subsidy. You also recall that one uh, the subsidy on on um, on diesel has been removed long time ago. The subsidy on on kerosene has been removed. Kerosene which is consumed, which is what is used by the by by, by the by the poor and the needy. In Nigeria is more expensive than petroleum products. So you begin to wonder when we have removed subsidy on, on, on D 
issue and kerosene. Yet we are still paying more than we have ever paid in the history of this country on fuel subsidy. Okay. So, but Gina Dawson, do you... Yeah, do you think it's still rational? I mean, we're still with the Punch newspaper this morning. You think it's rational for us to continue, or the federal government? I mean, you've raised a point first that um, it, it doesn't really reflect. I mean, where's, where does it, uh, has it been captured, you know, in the budget? But on the other hand, if you look at how much, according to the Minister of Finance, that we are spending on a daily basis, do you think that it's rational for us to continue with the subsidy uh, till 2023. We're talking about 18 billion naira daily consumption. That's what the government is spe spending on a daily basis. And, you know, from this movement till 2023, that's a lot. They're spending 18 billion on how many liters per day consumed by, by which sector, which area. So is it the one we used to, 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 to power our uh, various rooms or various offices or companies. If you are talking about powering companies, we don't use PMS. It's, it's NGO that is used for, for, for powering. And that's that's the area it's in terms of energy creation, that's the area which we are consulting. If you are talking about consulting in terms of that, not even being involved in construction or construction of roads or involved in, in in, um, in, 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 in factories and industries that are using diesel, the guy is diesel, the guy is diesel, diesel generator. So we are talking about us consuming 18 point something billion worth of petroleum, subsidized petroleum products, subsidized daily. So what is the consumption in If the daily budget is 18 point something billion, what is the actual budget? Who is the CBO? Who are those consuming that product? Are they spirits? No, but, but as much as one. Because, not... because, because when they talk about these figures, you begin to wonder what is going on. The diesel is not subsidized, kerosene is not subsidized, it's only petrol, which is PMS. So, who are those consuming those? 18 billion subsidies on daily basis. And yet, the economy is not productive economy. We have a double digit inflation. So my question is, is it, is it still rational to continue in this light? I mean, because as I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're looking at 2.19 trillion naira, uh, you know, to be expended at the end of the year. That's, that was, you know, uh, the proposition that's been put out that was in 2021 for 2022. So my question here is, is that with this amount, do you think it's still logical? Because if the government has said we're going to take out subsidy, uh, just imagine what we can do with that amount. The health sector is there, the educational sector is there. Should we continue uh, subsidizing at this point where, you know, other sectors of the economy are threatened and, and they can't function optimally uh, due to lack of financing? I am not fully persuaded because this administration, when it was in opposition, went on the street of Nigeria to protest. They removed the attempt on the overall of fresh subsidy. And we are told when this administration increased the pump price from 97 to 145, and now it's about, we are told that oh, the government is allowing the market forces to take control and that government has the most subsidy. And today we still talk about removal or non removal of subsidy. And these were people that are protesting when the last administration made an attempt to increase it beyond 97 naira. So, I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, this, this is something which is still shrouded in, in secrecy, which is still a mystery, which most Nigerians do not understand with respect to. Um, payment or non-payment of subsidy and with respect to the amount of liters of petroleum products we consume in Nigeria and the amount to which government subsidizes petroleum, petroleum products considering what is the reality on the ground and considering the, 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 the economic implications of, of this subsidy that you have pointed out because a lot of money are going to this subsidy. There are 
other sectors are affected because there is no adequate fund to take care of other, other sectors. And that itself calls for concern. To see why the government is much more, much more eager to subsidize and less um, concerned with voting money for that sector of the economy, for that productive sector of the economy that can really help the economy to grow. Hmm. Well, um, also on the issue of endless borings, uh, debt servicing engulfs 13.17 trillion naira under the Buhari administration, and according to the punch, education is suffering or education suffers. Well, recently, uh, a stakeholder, very prominent, had said that, you know, borrowing is not a problem that we're still within our capacity to borrow. As a matter of fact, it's very important, it's critical to borrow for infrastructural uh, development. But at what point do we say no? What point do you think that we should, you know, look in and say, hey, uh, the option of borrowing should be, you know, kicked out or should be crossed off from our list in terms of revenue? Because we understand that what we're grappling with here is the issue of revenue. So at what point do we say, hey, we need to put an end to borrowing and cross it off the list and probably maybe, you know, find other means of generating revenue? Well, government will always borrow to finance its projects, capital projects. That's the lower standard practice. Um, government does not borrow to feed in on its on its on its lifestyle or the lifestyle of its officials. Or to borrow for recorded expenditure. You always borrow to for capital projects and then people will enjoy the project and then children yet to born will come to enjoy the project as well as pay for the project. However, the reverse the case in Nigeria, we have a situation whereby government is borrowing one, there's no level of transparency when it comes to borrowing. And two, when government borrows, allegedly, what government borrows money for um, is sometimes overestimated the cost of these projects are, are, are inflated to the point that you begin to wonder whether there is a need for for government to actually borrow money for this for this white elephant elephant projects, which usually leaves a heavy body on the people as well as the as well as the economy. So government, American government, is one of the highest indebted government you can ever think of. However, when money are borrowed, they are used for the right cause which they are meant they are meant for. When this present government talks about infrastructure, it's very easy for someone to come under the umbrella of infrastructure and say, oh, we are borrowing money for infrastructure. You go to the specific world at the infrastructure. We are at the infrastructure. Now, this money has been borrowed for. And another thing we also look at is this government, this simply posture that, that, that one, this government is to come into power, and two, the pretensions that this government made with respect to this particular administration with respect to being an anti-corruption um, drive. On one hand, government is saying, government said over the years that they recovered a lot of money that was stolen. On the other hand, the government is borrowing money in the same way, the same government is using money to, to, service, to service debt. It's just it, 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 it does not. It just does not make any sense to to an average mind to understand. You see, government responsibility is to simplify its policies and program so that an average man on the street can understand what government is even saying and what government is doing. So the doing and the saying of government must must carry must be intended and. So that people can see the transparency what government is doing. But as far as we are concerned, you just don't know what government is borrowing money for is the real system. Now the real the legal pardon uh, train, train has been has been reduced because of the cost of tissue. The Kaduna Abuja train system as as has been suspended as a result of security security challenge. So we are at the 
we are advancing you. We are at the, the, the infrastructure. The Lagos Ibadan Expressway has taken more than has taken more than more than 16 years to be constructed. So I want anybody to tell me where this infrastructure are in Nigeria, whether they use it to build hospitals, whether they use it to build airports, whether they use it to build schools, this infrastructure, other than somebody treat us come and we just throw the world around. We are borrowing money, we are spending money on infrastructure. Mm. You know, because, uh, I mean, it's, it's really worrisome. In the first quarter, we had reports saying that uh, what the government, I mean, what we were using to service debt at the time, we're looking at 1.9 trillion naira, uh, which is a bit 310 billion higher than what revenue we were generating at the time. So because it feels like, I mean, if you look at what we project as revenue, um, you know, earnings or what we intend to achieve at the end of the day with how much we're using to, you know, service debt. It's not a good business at the end of the day. So it feels like, you know, we're spending more than what we even project to earn as a country. And uh, I'm not sure that, you know, any capitalist or any government that is very uh, profitable in her thinking would want to venture in this light where you're uh, actually losing than what you're generating because what you're generating is not even enough. But we need to just move away from that because we have all the headlines uh, that are quite interesting and would like to share your thoughts on them uh, just before we call it a wrap. So quickly, we have uh, the leadership newspaper. Uh, apart from the leadership, we have, uh, you know, the Daily Trust newspaper. Now, on the Daily Trust, let's get back to the educational sector now. Uh, no end in sight as ASU and federal government refuse to shift ground, uh, talking about the strike. Now, the president or the government is saying that no work, no pay. And uh, some quarters are saying that the law does not actually back that. And uh, the, the lecturers are saying that uh, they will be ready to actually forget two sessions if they do not pay this salaries and what have you. Recently, we also hear that, you know, us has rejected, you know, the salary structure that the federal government has presented to it. So it, it's quite um, not interesting uh, for the Nigerian students. And even when we talk that, you know, there's also a level of compromise with the uh, payment platform, that's the UTIS and the IPPIS. It seems like no one is compromising at this point. But J.D. Johnson, what's the way forward? What do you make of all of this? You thought it's simple. You have missed that level of productivity. The same person occupying that office since the session of this administration. Same applies to Minister of Education. And you have people at the ends of affair uh, to resolve problems and did not be demonstrated the lack of capacity. Under normal circumstances, these people should have resigned to save their faces and to save the government from this embarrassment. And new people should have been appointed to look into addressing this particular issue so that there will be a solution inside this problem. But all in all, the solution to this problem is government to divest its interest in this educational institution and allow, just like we allow private intervention in the telecom sector. We have and the Petroleum Industrial Act has also done that for the dancing sector of the Nigerian mm, oil and gas industry. We should allow that to come into the educational sector too. That's the permanent solution to this particular problem. Allow decentralized system of education, provide investors with autonomy, let them generate the revenue that they can use to run themselves. If they are cedar tell of higher learning and education and center for innovation and creativity, each school should be able to generate funds to run itself if truly they are indeed center for innovation and creativity. Not wait for government subsidy at the end, at the end of the month or at the end of, of the year. That's the, that's the best approach for us because it's becoming clearer that government cannot afford to fund all of these institutions that we are at the federal level because there are competing sectors for for resources and the, the private university model and the private and just imagine if there are no private primary school 
and private secondary school. What do you think we have up to the educational sector in Nigeria? Now, the reason why we have not had a year collapse at the tertiary level is because we have seen private universities being run by individuals and by missionaries. And we have seen that that model, no matter whatever um, misgivings or biases you have, we have seen that that model is working. Now, if those institutions can survive, I, I think that the public institutions even have more tendencies and capacity to survive. Let this institution run on its own, generate revenue, operate and compete with the private institution. And the government should, as a matter of urgency, provide educational bank where students can go and get loans to pay their fees. Once the only collateral you require is your letter of admission. Once you are admitted, the process will be quick and it will be fast. All this money we are devoting for first subsidy on daily basis. Imagine if you put that money for in a, in a particular bank and students are paying the competing fees that they should pay to this institution. I can assure you that we will solve this problem once and for all. And then you turn on, the, you turn on, you turn on your, the appointments. The appointments of professors will be turned on. It will not be a lifelong appointment. The appointment of the staff will be turned on. So it will be based on productivity and creativity and innovation. These are the things we should be looking at when it comes to solving the ASU problem, which is solving the entire educational problem. We must turn our institutions to innovative and creative institutions rather than productive, rather than institutions of producing graduates, graduates that cannot compete in the workplace in the 21st century. These are the talents. Right. And the truth is, Johnson. I'm sure a lot of ASU members will hate me for what I've seen. All right. <laughs> GD, let's also look at uh, this is quickly because we're out of time now. And after this, maybe just in a minute or thereabout, or less than a minute, I'd like to share your thought. The Emirates and uh, the suspension of flights from Nigeria, uh, to and from Nigeria, is a thing that's gotten a lot of people talking. But uh, there's also a school of thoughts that's big on the fact that, hey, this is a time where you know, local, um, uh, you know, uh, flight operators can actually take advantage of the situation and, you know, just go international. What do you make of all of this? <laughs> well, it's an opportunity for the local players in the aviation industry to tap into. And when they suspend their flights to, it's, it's to, to our country, it's a window of opportunity just like Russia exploited the war between ourselves and the Ukraine to stabilize the, the rebels in the face of steep sanctions from Western world. And Russia was able to find a middle ground in stabilizing the rebels, and the rebels is getting ahead of other international, international currency. So any situation, any decision provides you with, with opportunities and truth with opportunities and threats. So there are opportunities to be exploited. This is a strategic window of opportunity for local operators to tap, to tap into. And this is also a point that the Nigerian air, that Adi Sirika, the Minister of uh, Admission, has spoken about, has launched and launched to work into which we have a national career and we shouldn't be taken for granted. It's a matter of strategic importance. It's a matter of national interest. There's a matter of national pride that we should tap into. No nation should hold us to ransom as the general of Africa. If you recall, the first flight that was used to fly the 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 the, 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 the head of the Emirates, the when it was formed in 1971, right. was 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 provided by Nigerian Airways. So if we could do that for them, and it shows where we are coming from, and it shows the road that we have found ourselves when it comes to central development in Nigeria. Well, uh, thank you so much, G.D. Johnson, for being part of the show. But, I mean, I'm just wondering how uh, we will begin to look outside the international. The local players should take advantage of the crisis or the situation and begin to fly when they're not even able to cater for the needs of local, you know, flights. I mean, you need to take a, take a trip to the airport 
and see how many flights are, you know, moving on a daily basis. They're also complaining, you know, of the aviation fuel, operational costs, amongst other issues. But that's the size of it. Thank you so much. We appreciate your thoughts and we look forward to uh, having you share your thoughts on the show as we proceed next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Merci. All right, Thank you very much. Okay. Happy Friday, you guys all well, that's G.D. Johnson uh, has been sharing his thoughts on some of the headlines. Uh, we appreciate him. We'll take a break now. When we return, it'll be time for us to head straight to our first major conversation on The Breakfast. Please stay with us. <laughs>